Hey, this is Digital by Computing. Today we're going to be talking about how to set up an IT home lab, essentially a learning environment for you to use at home to upskill yourself. You could be in the IT industry already, or you could be looking at getting into the IT field, working with computers and servers and doing support and doing things like that. We're going to be talking about hardware, we're going to be talking about software, maybe some ideas that you can be using at home. We're going to be covering some of the stuff that I've got, the, the lab environment that I've got set up, uh, how I set it up, what I bought, uh, what software I've got running, things like that. So hopefully you find this helpful and you learn something new. So my name is Emilio and I work in the IT industry and I absolutely love it. And if you're watching this, you want to know how to build your own home lab. What should you be doing? How do I start? What do I need? Etc. Etc. Like you, I was asking these same questions uh, a number of years ago. Um, and me having my own lab, or at least building some sort of a lab environment at home, really helped me to uh, get into the IT industry, uh, learn more and more, and really upskill myself. I wasn't able to go to a workplace um, and build a lab or be given equipment. So I had to go and learn myself. Uh, and the best way that I learned in IT, build my own environment, get some cheap hardware, get some cheap software, some free software, wherever it may be, uh, and then just go and learn myself. Um, so all I did was really just started building some stuff from scratch, going online, researching things, and then just really learning as I went. Sometimes you may want to go get certified. You want to go get a CCNA, which is Cisco's CCNA, or you may want to get Microsoft's, uh, become a certified professional in Microsoft, in servers, or whatever it may be. So sometimes having your own lab at home and building that helps you to be able to be confident enough to have the skills because you've been trialing them and testing them at home to then be able to go out and get certified. And then likewise, being able to then go to work to your boss, to a new company and say, hey, look at all these skills that I've got. So before we even get started, think about what you want to set up. What do you want to build? What do you want to learn about? If you want to learn about servers and storage, then you need to have equipment that has server and storage capabilities. If you want to learn about networking, you may want to look at investing in some networking equipment. Um, you can have networking simulators or emulators um, installed onto computers, uh, which essentially mimics a real Cisco switch or a real Cisco firewall. So you, you're gonna need some computers, right? First and foremost, you're gonna need some computers. Uh, one or more, the more computers you've got, the better, that is spare, um, but you don't have to have a whole pool of computers. You can have just literally one computer to start building your lab. Have that computer that has enough RAM and CPU resources, but has enough storage. Ideally, it should have storage to be able to you know, contain a number of uh, servers on, on top of it. We're gonna talk about virtual machines in a little while, but enough space to be able to build stuff. You may want to have a dedicated storage device, which is what I have. I've got a NAS, which is a network attached storage, where all of my storage, all of my servers, everything that I build in my lab are all stored onto there. If you don't have that or can't afford that, that's fine. You can just have a computer with a, you know, for example, a USB hard drive attached to it that is very, very large, so you can build a lot of stuff. Essentially, the more resources, the more CPU, the more RAM, the more storage that you've got, the bigger lab you can have, the more things you can have running at once uh, in your lab environment. You need to find yourself a good spot for your lab. If you're gonna have a few computers together, a storage device, a switch, a, a router, things like that, Try to have them together in the one space. Uh, it just makes it a bit neater. You can have things spread around, but I like to have it all combined into the one spot. Um, if you've got a desk, you can just chuck it all on the one desk, um, but really just find a good adequate spot for your devices um, that's all connected together. You can connect everything together via ethernet cables. If you've got devices that are on Wi-Fi, you can connect them over Wi-Fi and ethernet, have combinations. If you get a lot fancier and you get yourself like a rack cabinet, Right, this is something that you would find more in a business, in a small business, medium, large business. They're gonna have cabinets full of equipment, rack mounted switches and servers and storage. Um, if you've got the money and you wanna go and do that, great. That is the preferred option. Get yourself a rack, go and put it in a, in a garage somewhere, in a closet, uh, and stack it all like that. That is gonna cost you more money. It will still be an, ex it will be an excellent lab, um, but it's not on the budget friendly side. It's gonna cost you a little bit more uh, and it's take up more space. And if you're having rack mounted devices, it's potentially gonna be noisier as well because a full rack mounted server is a lot noisier with all the fans inside than a smaller laptop that you're just using up as a lab or a little small um, NUC sort of computer. Remember the more equipment that you've got, 
Uh, the more resources you've got, the bigger your lab environment can be. The next step is to think about what do you want to build? You've got your hardware now, it's all set up, it's all working. Now you've got to think about what technologies do you want to learn about. So focus on learning about Windows and Linux. Think about Windows Server, building Windows Server instances and all of the bells and whistles that you can build within Windows Server. So think about the technology that you want to be using. Uh, Linux is the next operating system. Linux is, uh, for the most part, it's free. Um, in enterprise, it is free also. If you want to get support and help from a Linux environment, then you do have to pay for support services. But Linux uh, generally is going to be cheaper, sometimes free, um, and it's going to use less resources than Windows. Uh, a lot of the Linux operating systems are uh, command line, uh, CLI, rather than having a GUI front end, a nice GUI interface, uh, that uh, Windows Windows 10 or Windows Server 2019 will have. But the only thing with Linux is you've got to learn the command line. Uh, Linux has a lot of different flavors, which is CentOS, Ubuntu, uh, you've got Red Hat, you've got a whole bunch of different Linux flavors. Um, and learning about each of these is really good. If somebody says to you, I need to build a new web server. You know, well look, I can build a web server using this, I can build a web server using this, I can build it you know, running IIS on Windows, or I can use Apache and MySQL and all these other things on Linux, for example. So having a good understanding of both is good. Think about things like uh, building a domain controller. How do you build a domain controller? Building DNS, understanding the different types of DNS records, what DNS is used for, building a DHCP server, how DHCP works, setting up D you know, DHCP leases for IP addresses, um, building an NTP server for time, building a web server, we just talked about it earlier, what are the components of a web server and everything that sort of comes along with a web server. So have a think about what you want to learn about. Um, there's a whole heap of different sorts of servers and services that you could be building across both Windows and the Linux fleet, and it really is up to you what sort of servers you want to be building in your lab environment. Learning about firewalls is also really helpful. Your home router, actually, uh, will have firewall capabilities. Um, a lot of the basic functionality will be turned on. A lot of the more advanced stuff will be turned off. So you could also go into your home router that could be connected into your lab and play around with different firewall settings and opening up um, certain ports on your firewalls, ACL, which essentially uh, access control lists to allow certain traffic in and out. But if you really want to get fancy and learn about firewalls really, really well, use something like PFSense. PFSense is completely free. Um, it is essentially a, a piece of software that you can install onto a server and it's a software-based firewall that has amazing, amazing functionality. If you want to learn about Cisco, the Cisco fleet of hardware, the switches, things like that, the iOS language, which is what Cisco uses, you can get yourself a whole bunch of Cisco emulators. GNS3 is a very good one, essentially emulating a real-life Cisco switch. You can install it, you can build a switch, you can log into the iOS interface, play around, learn things like that. I like to have a centralized location for all of my storage. In my case, I bought myself a NAS, which is a storage device containing multiple hard drives so that I can have a whole heap of storage to store all of my servers onto it. The more storage I have, the more I can build. What I like to do is I like to install what's called VMware. It's essentially, it's an operating system that is provided by a company called VMware, completely free. You can download uh, VMware's ESXi free off the VMware website, install it onto a PC, onto a laptop, which then you can use to go and build multiple servers on top of that hypervisor computer. You then connect to that hypervisor using a web browser and build what are, what are called virtual machines. These are essentially servers or multiple servers that are running virtually. You could potentially install five servers inside of this one physical computer. Other than VMware, the other big ones out on the market are um, Microsoft's Hyper-V uh, and uh, Citrix Zen Server. I generally like to use VMware because VMware is the one that is most commonly used in the industry. So the fun things to do is once you do get VMware up and running, you've got ESXi running, you've got it potentially running on more than one computer. Get these servers to be talking to each other. Set them up with static IP addresses, maybe in different subnets. Try and play around with different subnets. How do I get one subnet to talk to another subnet? Creating routes between these subnets is something that will help you understanding at least basic network functionality and basic network connectivity. We've got a couple of 
uh, Lenovo screens here uh, hooked up uh, over HDMI to USB-C on my Mac. So this is really just the primary location where I'm going to be controlling my devices uh, along with a separate screen right here. At the back of this, I've got some ethernet ports which run into different places, including a uh, network switch. Uh, this is just a standard bookshelf, uh, which I've just got a number of different things, uh, nice little gimmicks as well. Here are the few devices that, that I've got running. From a hardware perspective, you really need two big things. You need something that is gonna be storage and you need something that is going to be compute processing power. So as we talked about earlier, uh, we are going to be running uh, VMware. To create some ESXi servers, for example, you can really use any computer. Any, any general modern computer will be able to do it quite well. So I've got uh, two that I primarily use. Uh, the first one is this little one up here. This is a Intel NUC. This is really just a small little computer. All right, it's the same as any other computer that you could normally uh, buy. Uh, it's just nice and compact and small. And that is the reason why I bought it. I wanted something that was nice and compact and small. And this is excellent for my lab. Um, I don't need a whole heap of space. It doesn't look messy. It actually looks quite neat just sitting up here. An i7, Core i7 in here uh, with a number of different cores. And then I went and bought RAM. Okay, so this has got 32 gig of RAM inside of it, as well as a uh, SSD hard drive. So at the back of this, there's a number of different connections. I'm not really running anything into it other than just an ethernet cable, which is connected into my switch just here. Now I've installed ESXi onto this. So it's running ESXi 6.7. So what I've got here is a uh, Mac mini. So I had one of these spare um, and really all it's running on here is ESXi. So I've got VMware's ESXi 6.7 running on here and then a second one running ESXi uh, that I've installed onto here. Now again the reason I wanted to use the Mac Mini was for two reasons. One because I had one that was spare that I was no longer using and I didn't have to go and buy another one of these. Now the reason I've got two running ESXi is I wanted to take advantage of what's called uh, vCenter uh, and really to, to use things like high availability, HA, fault tolerance, um, to do vMotioning which lets you move VMs from one to the other. That was only really possible with two ESXi hosts. If I have just one, um, I can't move VMs between them. And then if all of my VMs that are on here and this thing dies, then all the VMs automatically pop up and they start running on this one and vice versa. Underneath that is probably one of the more important pieces of tech that uh, I think everybody needs to get. So in here, these are three terabyte hard drives each. They're created in what's called RAID groups. Uh, you can learn about RAID um, in another video. So I can see uh, this as one bigger pool of disk. It's got redundancy. So if I lose one, I don't lose all my data, things like that. This is the processing power piece, right? It's the two computers. So the two computers are what is uh, running my ESXi, right? It's using the CPU and the RAM and the graphics from these computers. Now, these two computers are pretty good from a resource perspective. Uh, you can get something that's a lot more powerful. Obviously, if you wanna get something a bit more powerful, then you're gonna get better performance and you can allocate more resources to your virtual machines that you're building. For me, this is more than fine. I can actually run uh, a number of VMs all at the same time. I've built even more VMs, but I just have them powered off when I'm not using them. And then I can shut down other VMs and power them back on. The storage of those VMs, so the VMs themselves, the servers are not running, or not sitting, sorry, uh, on the hard drives on these computers. The hard drives inside of these two is really just to install the ESXi operating system. The VMs that I'm building, the Linux VMs, the Windows Server VMs, are sitting on here. So on the back of the NAS, uh, it's just got a, a couple of ethernet points. Uh, it's a, a gigabit ethernet. Uh, it's also got a number of other USB points uh, where I can actually run additional storage into it if I need to. Um, you can buy additional enclosures, disk arrays essentially, which you can connect into it and then just expand it further. When you're looking at your lab environment, if you're gonna be building a number of VMs, you need to have enough capacity. So if I've got 32 gig of RAM on here and I'm gonna be building uh, two VMs, one is eight gig, and one is 16 gig of RAM, that's what I'm gonna be allocating it. Then I've used up a lot of my RAM and I've really only got just under eight gig if you include the um, operating system that's running on here, which needs a little bit of RAM left and that's it. You won't be able to run all your VMs at once with something that is small like this, but it gives you the capacity to go and play, create things, build enough uh, servers 
uh, for you to be able to um, you know, learn and, and do whatever you need to do. So to pick up a NAS, uh, they're not the cheapest thing, but they are worth it. But get something that is good. Um, this particular one is a four tray. Um, you can get some that are two tray. Uh, something that will allow you to have redundancy, I think is the most important. Okay, so it's no point in just buying a very, very big hard drive um, because there's really no point. If that hard drive fails, then you lose everything. So I have multiple in here. Even two would be fine. And you have them mirrored. You know, in a particular RAID group, they're for mirrored. So if one dies, the other one picks it up. But I went for the four. Obviously, the more capacity you've got, the more stuff you can build onto there. Um, but there's a whole bunch of brands of NASs that you can buy. This particular one is a Netgear. That's what I chose at the points, a ready NAS. Um, but Synology is another really good one. QNAP is another really good one as well. If you don't have the money to invest in a NAS, that's okay. Um, if you're gonna look for a computer, get yourself a computer that has enough storage so that you can go and build your VMs um, nice and easy. Uh, and have enough capacity for those VMs. But it, as I said, I generally would recommend getting something like this um, because it is gonna give you more capacity and more storage. To the left of that is a Cisco Meraki switch. Um, I picked one of these up for free for doing some training um, with uh, Cisco, which is quite nice of them. There are certain courses, training, things that Cisco provide from time to time where you go ahead and register. Um, you can get yourself a, uh, a free uh, switch, which is uh, what I've got here. And this, this is a gigabit switch. This is then connected out to that uh, airport extreme, which we saw, and then scattered around my house. So I can really access all my devices right through here. On the very far right, you may have seen, this is just a uh, Lenovo laptop. Um, it's running an SSD hard drive, and this is just running Windows 10. And this is connected to a screen, which we just saw up above, up, up the top there. It's just a, a normal Lenovo screen. Uh, and what I use this for is um, just really for controlling all of this. So I can control these by logging into a web browser, uh, accessing the IP addresses of those ESXIs or the DNS name, however you've set it up. Uh, and then I can go and build VMs, switch off VMs, move VMs from here to here. I can also access my NAS uh, and access all of the, um, the data that's on there also. Uh, and that's also true really of any computer. I've got my, my MacBook Pro, which uh, I can also do the same thing. You don't have to spend a lot of money. Uh, if you've got a spare PC, it's great. Otherwise, go down to your local shop and buy yourself something similar to what I've got. I've got myself my little Intel NUC, I've got a spare Mac Mini. You don't have to do that. You can go get yourself even a, a Raspberry Pi, which is very, very cheap. You can install Linux onto that, and you can learn things right from there. Um, spend enough on, on storage, get yourself enough storage, get yourself a switch so you can run everything over ethernet, get things connected over Wi-Fi. There are multiple, multiple ways, but the first thing really is have a sit down and think about what you want to build. If you want to be going into the systems perspective, let's say you want to become a systems admin or a systems engineer, build your lab with that focus. If you want to become a network guy, build your lab with a network focus. If you want to become a database admin, go ahead and build yourself a database environment. Build a SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server. Build yourself a MySQL. Build yourself an Oracle box, right? Experiment with all of that if you're wanting to focus on database. Playing around with the stuff is the best way of learning. I know that's the best way that I learn. I don't learn very good if I just open up a textbook and just read. I don't learn that good even watching a video. This video will be helpful to you. I hope it does. Uh, help you out, but it's not the best way of learning. I'm just giving you some tips and some ideas for you to go and install and build your own lab with your own hardware, your own software, whatever your setup may be, but then you need to spend the time, you need to spend the hours and the effort to go and learn how to do this stuff. Play around with things, break things. The best way sometimes of learning is to go and build stuff and get it wrong. You can't get the domain controller working, you can't get Active Directory working. You can't get your database working on your Linux server. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna go and research. You're gonna go spend the time. You're gonna go spend the effort on learning how to do it. Troubleshooting it, right? That is the best way of learning. Um, it's very, very rare that somebody from an IT field has just gotten to a particular level in their expertise and their technical knowledge just from sitting on their hands and being spoon fed all this information. You've got to spend the time, you've got to spend the effort, and often in most workplaces you won't get the time to go and learn this yourself. 
if you are, for example, in help desk, you're a desktop admin, you're a systems engineer, and you're just focused on your thing, that's all you do at work, you come home, you've got all that opportunity for you to build your own lab, learn your own stuff, learn things and you don't have the opportunity to learn when you are perhaps in a working environment. So you need to spend the time, you need to spend the effort. So if you can take anything from this video, you need to put in the effort to learn yourself. I know for me, whenever I'm, I'm speaking to anybody, if I'm wanting to hire somebody in the IT field, I always ask them, how do you learn outside of work? And if they talk to me about having a lab at home, learning themselves, what they do in that lab uh, is very, very favorable to me because I understand that they are passionate about technology, they're passionate about IT, but they are passionate about learning and building on their technical skills. So here we are logged in. We are connected to one of my ESXi hosts via my web browser. I've got a number of VMs that I've created. So this is running, this is my Intel NUC computer that we've looked at. Currently, three of them are running at once. Uh, DC is my domain controller. I've got my firewall, and then I've got a test uh, Ubuntu that acts as a client. Because it is a Intel NUC, it doesn't have the resources as a server or a more powerful computer, so I can't actually have everything running at once. So really all I need to do is go ahead and shut down one that I'm no longer using and then power up others and sort of do a mix and match. Alternatively, what I can do is lower the resources that are allocated to my VM. All I'd have to do is shut them down and reduce those, so they are gonna be running a little bit slower, but at least that way I can uh, power on more devices at once. I've got Windows Server, I've got a number of Linux VMs as well. So I do have a number of Windows Server uh, installs right here. You can actually go to the Microsoft website, just go into Google and look up Download Windows Server 2019 or 2016. You can download full trial versions of a lot of other Microsoft uh, server technologies. You can actually use it full functionality for 180 days. The great thing is because you are testing these in a virtual environment, you can easily use it for 180 days, shut it down, rebuild it, and then you can restart that, uh, that counter for 180 days. What I find helpful is you can actually get what's called an MSDN license, which is essentially part of the Microsoft Developer Network, uh, and you can get keys for all of your Microsoft products because you are using it for testing reasons. This is my uh, Mac Mini that is running ESXi. Uh, again, a few VMs that are powered on. You can see the operating system that is running on them. Things such as uh, CentOS and even Kali Linux, which are free editions uh, for the client, for the server editions of those Linux operating systems, which are excellent from a learning perspective. Uh, and the great thing about this is I can actually power them off, shut them down, change the resources, very, very easily, build new VMs, delete new VMs. Literally all I have to do is, let's say I wanna get this one here, I can shut it down and then I can go ahead and actually delete it uh, if I no longer need it. I then am saving on the resources, I'm saving on the hard drive space and then I can go and build some new VMs and do further testing. This here is my NAS. You'll see that right here, I've got four three terabyte hard drives that are in a RAID 5. Uh, I can go and change a whole heap of stuff. I can create shares, I can create iSCSI stuff. If I wanna use SAN capabilities, uh, you've got a full app store where I can download a lot of different applications um, and really play around as much as I can from this NAS. So that is it. Um, I hope you found this helpful. There's definitely a lot of stuff that we can cover. This is really just a, a basic lab at home and if you're willing to spend a lot more money, you can get yourself something a lot better, uh, running a lot more stuff um, you know, to be able to aid in your learning. But that is it for now. I would love it if you gave me a thumbs up on that video and like it if you did find it uh, helpful. Comment below, let me know your thoughts, let me know what you wanna see in future. Also, please subscribe to Digital by Computing to my channel uh, and click on that notification bell to let you know and keep updated. Hope you found it helpful. We'll talk to you next time. See you later.